Hi folks, Chris Skinner at VMware Education Services. Today's segment will be looking at installing the VMware vCenter server. The vCenter server is a man management platform that allows me to centralize the management of all of our ESXi hosts and the virtual machines that run on those ESXi hosts. As you can see, there are a number of hosts that can exist per vCenter server instance, as well, up, as well as a significant number of virtual machines per vCenter instance. The vCenter server architecture also requires some additional components as you can see in the upper right hand corner. We need a database server that hosts the database repository for these objects, as well as an Active Directory or NIS LDAP services. Down at the bottom we can see that we have ESXi hosts registered to that vCenter server and the application which is called vSphere Client is used on the client machine to access and manage the vCenter server and the hosts running in that environment. We have with vSphere 5.0 two options now for managing vCenter server. We can do a virtual appliance based vCenter server which is deployed as a virtual machine running in a Linux operating system. Additionally we can use the tested and true Windows-based vCenter server, which can be installed either on a physical box or a virtual machine. Either of these two methods are fully supported by VMware server. In addition to installing ESX server, there are some prerequisites that have to be met in advance. Naturally, we want to make sure that all of our hardware and software requirements are met. Ideally, in a, we would like to have the vCenter server a member of an Active Directory domain rather than a workgroup environment. In addition to that, you do need a centralized repository, some form of database to store the objects that exist in vCenter server. vCenter server as an application, like any other application, does have some minimum hardware requirements and software requirements. As you can see from this list here, there are minimum memory requirements, processor requirements, and of course we will need an operating system to do the installation. At the bottom of this slide you can see that there is a matrix guide that does exist on the VMware website which will identify the interoperability of these components. The vCenter server also has a database requirement and must have an active connection to a database to store the objects that are managed by vCenter server. The default database, which comes with vCenter server, is an SQL 2008 Express. It's bundled with the vCenter server, it exists on the same media, and it can be used ideally for product evaluations, demonstrations, and proof of concepts. Also it is supported for very small deployments, very small environments with up to five hosts and 50 virtual machines. If you need to scale much larger than that, then of course we recommend using a more robust database server that is designed for scalability and you can see the supported databases listed at the bottom of this slide. Now we'll take a look at doing the installation of vCenter server from the installation media. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at installing the vCenter server. So what you see here is the splash screen that's presented to me from the vCenter server media disk. Once again, as we did with ESXi, you download the vCenter server media from our server and you burn it to a DVD or CD-ROM. In the case of vCenter server, it's going to need to be a DVD. We mount that disk, we launch it up, and naturally we'll see a splash screen here. We'll choose the first option which is going to install the vCenter server. So we then choose install and of course we accept the security warning and allow us to run. At this point we are going to run the English version of the installation here. At this point we're unpacking the files from the install shield. And once the installation wizard has prepared the files for us, we click on Next. And you will see an end user patent agreement here. We can just simply click through Next on this screen. We'll need to accept the end user license agreement as with all software applications. Click Next. And at this point, we can enter a username, organization, and or a license key. The license key is optional for installation, 
We can, if we elect not to choose to enter the license key, run an evaluation mode for 60 days duration. So here we'll just simply enter a username as user, we'll enter the organization as company, and we will forego the license for this particular installation. Once again, it will be fully functional for 60 days of evaluation time. Click Next. We are going to elect to install the local installation of Server 2008 Express. This will be a small scale deployment. If in fact you were using a uh, third party or Microsoft SQL Server database server, you would have needed to create the pre-create the DSN connector, ODBC connector to that database repository. So that'll be a requirement of an installation prior to starting the vCenter server installation. Click Next. Notice here it says that uh, we already have an instance of eServer Center, in, of SQL Server Express already installed. We'll simply overwrite the database for this particular installation. We will then be prompted for a server service account. It will default to using a local system account for this particular machine. Uh, in some cases, there are environments and corporate environments that do like to use centralized server services accounts, and we do have that option here. Simply deselect the checkbox, enter the appropriate account name and password, and the domain name for which that account exists. Next, we'll be, asking, we'll be asked what directory or destination folder we want to put the vCenter server in, as well as the inventory service that's a part of the vCenter installation. For this purpose and this demonstration, we'll accept the default pass. Once again, we have the option to install a standalone vCenter server or join a vCenter server group in linked mode. We are going to install vCenter server for the first time here, so we'll accept the standalone vCenter server for our choice. These are the default ports that are associated with vCenter server. Uh, this naturally will be information that you'll need to supply to your firewall folks so that they are aware of the types of ports that will be in use by the vCenter server and the client's applications that access it and so forth. There are two pages for ports and port information. Make sure you share that information with your security folks. At this point, you're also going to be presented a Java machine memory allocation configuration page. Uh, there are three predefined inventory sizes, as you can see listed here. This will largely be predicated, the selection that you choose will largely be predicated on the size of environment that you're going to be using. For our demonstration purposes, we're going to leave the default of small. We also will be ready to do the installation here. Click Install. As you can see now, the installation is complete to the vCenter server, so to close out, we click Finish. Okay, after our vCenter server has been successfully installed, the next thing we're going to want to do is install a client to access that newly set, uh, installed vCenter server. So from the same splash screen, we're going to choose the option that says vSphere Client. Once again, we'll choose the Install option down here at the bottom. accept the security warning. We're going to do an English installation of this client. And we click Next. Once again, we click Next again. We make sure that we've carefully read the entire end user license agreement, click on agree, and click next once more. Enter the username and company name as we did in the previous installation. We can choose again to define our location, our directory location as to where we want to install the client. This is the default path. We will accept that for this demonstration and click next and begin the installation. Okay, you can see our client is installed. Click Finish. And you'll notice an icon now exists on our desktop called vSphere Client. Simply double click that. 
enter the IP address or name of the vCenter server. In our example, it's VC01. Administrative credentials. Or you can choose use the Windows session credentials if appropriate. Click log on. We receive notice that our evaluation license will expire in 60 days. Remember that without the installation of a license, this product will function for 60 days in full functionality. We will need to enter a license number before that time expires. This concludes the installation of our vCenter server and the vSphere client. Okay, after we've done the installation of the vCenter server and the client that we use to access that server, you can see in this screenshot there are a number of objects that we can manage. We will be looking at those at a later point in time. First order of business is to add a host to the vCenter server inventory so that it can be managed. Simply go to the vCenter server interface, right click the data center, add host, and provide the fully qualified domain name the username for password that you defined for root, and optionally you can also include a lockdown mode. Next will be the licensing piece. As you may recall in our demonstration, we installed vCenter Server in evaluation mode. Once again, that gives us 60 days of full functionality in an evaluation mode. Naturally, at some point, you will need to install a license key. As you can see, it can be done by clicking on Home, administration, licensing. That will allow us to enter a product license key and at that point we can fully unlock the features and functions of the vCenter server environment in an unlimited duration. There are also a series of plugins that are included in the vCenter server. These plugins allow us to add some additional functionality and or features in a vCenter server environment. The Plugins can be added by simply going to the vSphere client, choose Plugins, and launch the Plugin Manager, which will give us the opportunity to install, as you can see in this sample list, a number of them. In addition to that, there are third-party plugins that can be made available for products that are capable with the vCenter server environment. For more information about vSphere infrastructure, go to VMware Education Services on the web. VMware Education Services provides training in over 500 centers in 60 countries. This is delivered both by VMware Direct as well as our partners authorized training centers. You can take classes in an instructor-led classroom environment. Class can also be delivered remotely via live online. We also have private on-site capability as well as a number of free e-learning modules that are available on our website as well. You can find us online at any of the links listed below.